So I was going through my review bag, you know, looking for games to review, and then I came across this one, which is actually the one game that a lot of people ask me to review. You really want me to review this game? Really? You guys want me to review Big Rigs Over the Road Racing? Well, alright, I'll review that one. Big Rigs Over the Road Racing, or Big Rogues for short, is one of those games that's infamous for being bad. This is one of those games that's legendary for being bad. It's up there with games like E.T., Bubsy 3D, and Superman 64. Games famous for bad programming and rushed design. But it also shares its infamy with games like the Steam version of Dead Island, Sword of the Stars 2, and Final Fantasy XIV. Games that were released, but were unfinished, and had to release patch after patch to fix the issues. Big Rigs only had one patch, and it didn't fix anything and I'm playing the unpatched version so I'm going into this shitstorm without a raincoat. Nah, this isn't gonna work. But before I dive into this cesspool, let's take a look at the box. Why would I want to look at the box, you may ask? Because of the blatant false advertising. This game advertises that you need to deliver your illegal cargo while you're being chased by the police. But there are no police that chase you in the game and you have no cargo to carry. It also says that you need to race other trucks across the country, but you never actually race trucks. You race a truck, and that truck never moves from the starting line. There is no AI programmed into this game. There's also no physics or collision detection either. The graphics are equivalent to early PlayStation 2 games. Graphics outdated for 2003, which was when the 6th generation console started to come to an end. A time when games were pushing the graphics of the console's hardware. There is no sound. There's none. No music, no sound effects. It's dead silence. And you know, you'd think that sound would probably be the easiest thing for them to do, but I guess they failed there too. The controls are dead simple. Up is forward, left and right should be obvious, and down is break, and then reverse. You can't get any simpler than that. You get five tracks to choose from, but there's really only four, as the night ride stage causes the game to crash and exit to the desktop. The patch that was released only took the first stage and reversed it. So that proves that they never had the night ride stage at all. You only need to complete one lap, and that doesn't fit with the advertisement. A cross-country run while being chased by the cops implies a point A to point B track, not a point A to point A track. And you are almost always making a right-hand turn. This game defies all laws of physics simply because there are none. They were never programmed in. This game has no rules. You're able to climb up mountains even if they're vertical and can even stop on them without falling down. And you pass through everything, lampposts, trees, bridges, even buildings. And you also go faster in reverse, so fast in fact that you go in reverse indefinitely. And it doesn't matter how fast you're going, if you let go of the down key, you stop dead. And speaking of endless, there's no boundaries either, so you can go beyond the terrain and into an endless void. I'm kind of reminded of Action 52 when playing this game. Just a rushed and unfinished product. A pre-release alpha that for some reason a publisher said, yeah, this looks good, and put it on the shelves. Honestly, someone had to have been seriously drunk or on drugs at the office when they thought that the idea of this game was good, but that this very unfinished build was set to be gold. The developer, Stellar Stone, was based in America, but they had their games developed overseas, specifically Russia and the Ukraine, so they could pay bottom dollar for development costs, usually on a budget of $15,000 because paying developers in the United States or Europe costs up to five times as much to develop there. You see how stupid it is to have your base of operations in one country while another country develops your game? I mean, how are you supposed to oversee the quality of your product? But why am I even asking this question? Obviously, they only wanted to put in as little money as possible, and it's obvious because it screams that at the top of its lungs. One of the other glitches is that you can instantly win at the starting line, as the game doesn't really know if you've completed the track or not. But you can also trigger this glitch by hitting the down key when the race starts. And you can tell that this game was produced in a non-English speaking country. As when you win, the race says, your winner. Not, you're a winner, no, your winner. Now a patch was released to fix two things, and it changed your winner to, you win, and it made the other truck participate in the race. However, the opponent stops dead right before the finish line, so it's impossible to lose. They didn't even address the physics or collision detection or any of the other problems. You know, I honestly have no idea what to give this game for a rating. I mean, it's bad, and it's up there with some of the worst games ever made. But it's laughably bad. It's kind of like Manos, The Hands of Fate. You know, you get all your friends together, and you just play it and have a good laugh at how bad this is. But you know, if you think about it, 
how can you hate a game with no rules and you always win? This is the first game that I've played that has truly left me mind boggled. I know I've talked about games and them being unfinished or untested before, but that was criticism to get my point across. This game, however, is truly unfinished and untested. This game had about seven people working on it, and from my experience in 3D modeling and animation and game design, this was the work of a single day. The patch probably took less than 30 minutes to make, and I'm not exaggerating here either. With how little this game gives you in terms of content, no more than a day's work went into this. Even more mind-boggling is how the guy in charge of this can think that the state of this game was good to go. Wait, I can top that. How did the publishers think that this game was good to go? The publishers have the most to lose when publishing a game. They take care of the marketing, advertising, and the manufacturing of the game. Congratulations, Big Rigs. You made me do it. I now have to add a new rating onto my system. The first ever neutral rating. Legendary. This game is legendary. You will probably never find another game this unfinished out in the wild. This is the Bigfoot of video games.